Hi, my name is Baltus from AB Travel Joy. I am a school teacher, automotive technology here in Holland. I already do this for I think 16 years and uh, before that I was a mechanic and I married with Anita and together we travel a lot. So this is also the reason we started like an Instagram account like AB Travel Joy, Anita Baltus Travel Joy and also this YouTube account. And um, in 2022, we uh, started a long trip with our van uh, for one and a half years. And we traveled through Europe. We started in um, Norway, Scandinavian, in wintertime, in January. So that was quite an adventure, but it was uh, awesome and so beautiful. And we went a little bit further than only the European borders because we also visited Morocco and Georgia. It was beautiful. After one and a half year, we went back home and um, we are already almost for a year teaching again. And I try to make a YouTube video of every country we visited. You can find them, of course, in this YouTube channel. But from now on, we're going to add new videos. And the new videos, I'm, I'm explaining technical aspects um, about automotive te technology. Um, like you can use in a, a caravan, in your camper, in your van, in your overlander or whatever. I think it helps when you, when you know some technical stuff, it can help you during traveling. So from now on, every two or three weeks, there will be a new video with a new topic. The topic of this video will be changing brake fluid. Why do you have to change your brake fluid every two or three years? Okay, here we go. Why do you have to change your brake fluid every two or three years? It is really important to do this, but why? Um, brake fluid inside your brake system is hygroscopic. That means um, that it attracts water. Even when your brake system is completely closed, it's still possible to get water inside the system. And um, water inside your brake system um, will lower your boiling point. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, the boiling point of a normal uh, dot 4 brake fluid is like 200, 210 degrees Celsius. We all know that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So if I add water in the brake system, then we all know that it will lower the boiling point of the brake fluid. But there's a second problem. Water is more heavier than brake fluid. So that means that the water will um, getting lower and lower and lower and lower in the system. And all the water gets to the brake calipers. And because this is the lowest point of the brake system. But also the brake calipers are the, the parts of the brake system <coughs> which are getting the most hot while braking. So the problem uh, with too much water inside your brake system is vapor lock. And vapor lock is like air bubbles inside your system. The fluid inside the brake system, you cannot compress fluid. So um, the power you get on a panel is the power you get on your brake caliper. But when there are air bubbles inside, you compress the air bubble and not uh, a power inside the brake caliper. So when you are braking for a longer time, like you're driving downhill or something, and you're braking and you're braking and you're braking and your brake pads getting hotter and hotter and hotter and your brake calipers getting hotter and hotter and hotter, um, and also the fluid inside your brake caliper is getting hotter and hotter and hotter, um, then um, here is the problem. When you stop braking and your you, you, uh, foot get off the pedal, then there is no pressure inside the brake system anymore. And because there is no pressure inside the system anymore, the boiling point, because of the pressure, lowers. And from the moment on that you stop braking, the water in the brake caliper starts boiling. And we all know when water boils, there will be air bubbles. So there 
are getting air bubbles inside the brake caliper. The next time you want to use your brakes, there is no pressure anymore because of the air bubbles. This is what we call vapor lock. This is also the reason um, that measuring the water in the brake fluid reservoir is a little bit stupid because uh, the best fluid is in the highest point of your brake system and the water will be on your lowest point. So if you want to measure the water inside the system, actually you have to measure it at the brake caliper. Nobody does. So this is just a reason that um, you have to change it for two maximum of three years. Just change it. No measuring at all. Um, this is for safety. And uh, like I said, I traveled a lot and um, I, I think I um, I heard stories four or five times while traveling and somebody said, oh, I had no pressure anymore. I was going down and whatever. And once in my life, I saw a crashed camper because they had no uh, brake pressure at all. So people, this is really, really important. Change your brake fluid every two or three years. And now where you can find your brake system reservoir. And um, you can see it already here on the yellow cap on the reservoir. And you also can see that there's written on the cap dot for fluid. So in case if you have to top up, you fill it with the dot for brake fluid. And also now you can see like uh, the reservoir is on the highest point of your brake system. So in case of water inside the system, um, the water actually will sink in the system to there. And this is your brake caliper. This you can see is your brake disc. It's a little bit rusty because the van is already, I think, for three weeks standing on the same spot. Um, but this is your brake caliper. The water will sink to here. And also on the back, if you have drum brakes, it will sink to your brake cylinder. Now, how can you read how much is inside the reservoir? You can see it over here. Here you see the sign maximum. There you can see the sign minimum. And um, if you can see already, I, you can see it here on mine. This is the level. Um, that means that my brake, uh, brake pads are uh, really good. And that's right, because I already uh, changed the rear brake pads. So they are new. The front brake pads, I think they are 50 or 60 percent. So this is quite okay. And of course, where can you find it? On a regular car. Um, this is a Ford Fiesta, four years old, I think. Um, and it's a little bit hidden underneath this paravan. But here you can see the cap of the reservoir. Uh, this is the sign of a brake system. And also you can see here dot four. Only use dot four for topping up. It is more difficult to see. Here is the minimum and over there is the maximum. You can't see it now because uh, we need a little bit light for uh, checking up this, uh, this level. But here you can find it on a regular car. Sometimes a brake system can uh, recover a little bit by itself after vapor lock, but normally not. So when vapor lock happens, um, then you need a garage for bleeding the system out. Um, that means that they uh, push the air bubbles out of the system. Um, sometimes it's possible if you know what you're doing um, um, on the road, but normally you need a carriage and uh, they have to do it for you. And besides vapor lock, we also don't want to have rust inside uh, the brake system. Um, water uh, causes rust and other, sides of other things of corrosion. Um, and if this happens, like the brake cylinders inside uh, the brake calipers, uh, or the pistons in the cylinders, they get stuck or whatever uh, by rust and corrosion. So this is a, a second reason that you have to change it so uh, the system stays movable. It is also good to know that when there is 1% water inside your brake system, um, the boiling point decreases by 25 degrees Celsius.
Okay, another thing about the brake system is uh, topping up uh, the reservoir. Um, and normally you don't have to top up your fluid. When it's on minimum in the reservoir, normally it means that uh, your brake pads are worn out. That means that um, the brake pads are, uh, are getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. Um, instead of uh, the thickness of the brake pad, it is, um, th there will be fluid. So the fluid inside of your reservoir, it uh, degreases. And um, when it's on minimum, this is a sign that um, normally your brake pads are worn out. So before topping up your brake system, um, it is better to check out your brake pads. When you top up uh, without checking your brake pads and the brake pads um, will be replaced, then they push back the pistons um, in the brake system. And when they push back the pistons, then the um, level, fluid level uh, increases and uh, it, 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 it will flow over. So uh, this is what you don't want. This, so when, when your brake fluid level is too low, um, please check your brake pads before topping up the reservoir. And then if you top up because it's too low, um, make an appointment with a garage because there is uh, a possibility that there is an external leakage inside your system or maybe an internal leakage, but there can be an, a leakage inside your system. So it is not usual to top up um, if you have to top up because it was below minimum. Um, please let a garage check your vehicle because there is a leakage possible. Okay, this is almost the end of the video about uh, why do you have to change uh, the brake fluid um, in your brake system. Uh, maybe it's good to know that the boiling point of this dot 4, the most used uh, brake fluid, is uh, between 200 and 210 degrees Celsius. There are um, other fluids like the dot 5.1. Um, you can uh, change it into another fluid which has a higher boiling point. But then you have to check out which fluid you can use because like the, the 5.0 is a complete other, actually it's not a fluid, that's an oil, you cannot use. So please keep in mind, yes, there are brake fluids with higher boiling points but please ask the local garage or whatever what you can use and let them do it for you because you don't want to add a wrong oil inside your system because then you have really, really, really big troubles. So this is the end of the video. The next video is about using a multimeter. So when there are uh, problems during travels, like uh, your battery is empty or the fridge doesn't work or uh, whatever, um, then you need a multimeter to check, hey, is there 12 volt or is it 14 volt or is it nine or... So uh, the next video, I'm gonna explain how you can use a multimeter on your camper caravan or whatever to find small electronic problems. Uh, problems. So, um, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Please click the thumbs up button. And don't want to miss a video anymore? Subscribe to this channel. See you!